Welcome again. In this session, we're reading Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. This is the parable of the shrewd manager. Verse 1. He, that is Jesus, also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a manager. An accusation was made to him that this man was wasting his possessions. He called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give an accounting of your management, for you can no longer be manager. The manager said within himself, What will I do? Seeing my Lord is taking away the management position from me. I don't have the strength to dig, and I'm I'm, I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do. So that I am, when I'm removed from management, they may receive me into their houses. Calling each one of his Lord's debtors to him, he said to the first, How much do you owe, my Lord? He said, A hundred batos, or that a batos is a boat, it says here in the notes, 395 liters, or, 100 and, or 104 U.S. gallons of oil. He said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. And he said to another, how much do you owe? He said, a hundred cores of wheat. It says here in the notes as well that a hundred cores is about 2,110 liters or 600 bushels of wheat. That's a lot of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write down 80. His Lord commended the dishonest manager because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are, in their own generation, wiser than the children of light, of the light. Isn't that interesting that Jesus would even say that the children of the world or the children of, you know, the children that are not really the children of God. We know that Jesus called many people children of uh, Satan, children of hell, sons of hell, sons of Satan. But the children of the world are not the children of God. The children of the world in their generation, Jesus said, are wiser than the children of the light. The children of the light are, of course, children of God. So Jesus continues in verse 9. I tell you, make for yourselves friends by means of unrighteous mammon, so that when you fail, they may receive you into the eternal tents. Whoever is Whoever or he who is faithful in very little is faithful also in much. He who is dishonest in very little is also dishonest in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? If you have not been faithful in in what in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for he will either, uh, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You are not able to serve God and Mammon. Mammon here, uh, it says here in the notes, refers to riches or a false god of wealth. So Jesus here makes it very clear. We need, to be, we need to be wise, but we also need to be very faithful in what we have, what, we're, what we have been given by God. And it's a very good illustration here. Jesus said, if you're faithful in little, you'll be faithful in much. If, you, if you're unfaithful in little, you, you'd be unfaithful in much. So Jesus is pointing his attention to unrighteous mammon here, speaking of just money. We need to be faithful with money. We need to be faithful in, with money so that we can prove that we are faithful with the real true riches. Okay? If we're unfaithful with the, what you might call false witness or false uh, riches, uh, how can we be faithful in, uh, in the true riches? Okay? So this is a very... Um, a very mysterious parable. There's a lot of stuff packed into this. A lot of things you got to think about. You know, when you are a master, or you can say when you're a boss, when you're an employer, when you're a supervisor, if you hired somebody, or if you're going to hire somebody, if you notice people 
who are unfaithful in little things, you know they will be unfaithful in a lot. If you notice people who are faithful in little things, you know they will be faithful in a lot. And so there's that particular uh, point there that Jesus makes. There's a lot of different points here that, that Jesus makes, and I don't want to get into de- into a lot of depth into all of these things, but let's look at let's look over a little bit. In verse 13, Jesus said, No servant can serve two masters. There are a lot of Christians today that they are serving themselves or they're serving the world. You know, they're serving an idol maybe in their life. Could be anything. Could be money. Could be a celebrity. Could be a boss. Could be a job. Could be, could be anything. Could be their reputation. They're serving an idol of their life, but they're also claiming to serve God also. Jesus made it very clear, you cannot serve two masters. You you have to choose which master you must serve. You must serve, if you are a true Christian, you better serve God and God only. Not your reputation, not your boss, not even your pastor in that sense. Okay, Although God would... Could uh, you know uh, direct you to serve other people, obviously, but not to serve them as your prime, as their, or excuse me, as your primary master. You've got one primary master, and that is God. And any anything or anybody that speaks against that, or, or teaches you, or tells you to do anything against that, is not to be served. Jesus makes that very clear. So yes. Um, this is quite a parable, and uh, again, I don't want to get into a whole lot of stuff right now. I want to make, want to make this video uh, kind of uh, a little bit shorter, but uh, what you need to do is you need to go your way, and as you go your way, as you go your way, may God give you a spirit of revelation, a spirit of wisdom and knowledge, and a hunger and thirst for the scriptures to read the Bible to read the, the uh, sacred texts of ancient days. So as you go your way, may God bless you. Open the eyes of your understanding and show you great and mighty things. In the name of Yeshua, amen.